My name is Rachel Yelena Williams, and I consider myself to be a painter, but I actually am interested in lots of different mediums. And I'm based in Brooklyn, New York. I usually start working on the floor. So I like to make big color swatches of paint. So I usually work in one color. I kind of allow myself to kind of feel like it's like a drawing almost where I feel like I don't have to be too careful about how it looks. I know that I'll be using it later on in the works or cutting it or using it or assembling it. So there's sort of a freedom in it. So a lot of the times, I'm using a lot of different marbling or water techniques. A lot of times I'll write what I'm feeling to sometimes. So I kind of feel like there's a way where I can just collect as many different colors and like think of each uh, canvas piece as like a different swatch of color. And then from there I build and kind of create assemblages with those colors. So all of my canvases or all of my work usually starts with a lot of information already and I use the color to kind of bounce around different ideas. My process in the studio is a lot around speed. I kind of start with like these canvases that are pretty fast, uh, immediate, they're kind of a little bit a place where I can kind of do whatever I want in a way and not feel worried so much about what that image is. Um, that speed kind of is where I get to be like the most excited and kind of have the most energy. And then I kind of think about that each way in the process of making. So there's a point where I'm kind of blending things together. There's points where things are kind of standing out, where things are getting really defined. Those have a different speed as well. The tactile quality in my work is very important. Getting to move things around is a really important part of my practice. So I can work in these small moments that become part of a larger moment, or I can take a moment from a piece and save it for another moment so things actually become physical. That tactile energy is something that I was almost painting at a point and I wanted it to become real. There was a moment where I kind of let that inspire my work and kind of push me to think even more about how I can um, flatten three-dimensionality and kind of play with texture and how things are manipulated. One of the materials that I'm using the most is rope and the rope for me began as something that was more of an intellectual and interesting kind of look at the history of the material. And then over time, I started to fall in love with how it was this manipulated form that was similar to the canvas of just cotton and how I could drench it in paint just as you do the canvas surface and that I could allow that to be the lines within the painting. The negative space, the two-dimensional or the three-dimensional space within the actual ropes themselves describing lines or showing actual physical movement within the works. Um, kind of became a way to think about touch and texture. And then actually while I was working and kind of getting even more inspired by this idea of working with my hands, I actually stopped using the paintbrush for a while uh, and kind of really focused on how I can use my hand, just like putting on a glove and putting the paint and materials directly on with my hand and really blending things together. I actually kind of was inspired by just how I put on my makeup, which is I just use my fingers. So I think that kind of was something that I just allowed to kind of happen naturally. Um, and I think that physicality of actually touching something and showing the process physically is something that I'm seeing as like a very kind of playful and expression. The works are made with custom shapes a lot of the times too. Some of them are wood shapes of just circles or triangles, but the moments where the kind of color takes over and you kind of lose the physical cut away three dimensionality of the works, a lot of that is actually created by, it was easier for me to just put as much on my hands and just blend it in. The circular format was actually originally inspired by this idea of viewing from an outside perspective. And so I was actually thinking about binoculars 
and like the shape of looking through a binocular into another faraway place. And then I started to really find that you could kind of associate a lot of things with the circle, the head, for example. I started to really kind of think about that as where the head would be or thinking about the eyes. The composition, it feels like it's endless and doesn't feel like there's a top or a bottom or a right or a left. It kind of feels like you can kind of constantly find that perfect moment by just kind of consistently turning the work. I would describe my work as something between painting and sculpture. The, the thing that really connects the two for me uh, painting and sculpture is actually in drawing, and so that's what I kind of began to see the um, rope, and I started to look at m sculptural materials as if they were um, drawing lines and drawing marks, so using them and thinking about them as opposed to thinking about the use of them and kind of going back and forth between the use and the visual I like to use common and everyday materials in my work. For example, in this show, there's ropes, there's hooks, there's hammocks, and all of them, they bring certain meaning to the work, I think, in the sense of what they're used for, where they usually are, how they relate to the body. When thinking about the body and reference to the female body within the show is, in a large scale mural. For me, it is a representation of a figure in kind of a dynamism type of style that's very fast and kind of looking as if they're like moving so fast that the figure is abstracted. I would say I learned a lot in reading David Batchelor's Chromophobia and his approach to understanding color. I really like how he describes color as something really mysterious. When you really think about color, it has so much space for meaning and it has so much emotion with it. Um, and when we think about how much meaning we can associate with certain colors, it's actually really amazing to think about how abstract you can associate a story with color. The title of the exhibition is Hair and Body, and that came from um, one of the main works that's in the show uh, titled Swing in Protective Style, which is a work that I'd been thinking of or drawing and conceptualizing for a long time because I was actually inspired by an artist, Kathleen Lewis, and she hasn't made so much work and presented so much work, but the work that she has presented has been her creating like very intricate installations in a space with just braided hair. Really interesting and kind of wild and free ways of taking over a space. I like the idea of kind of responding to her work, which was called Ethnic Signifiers. So I thought of how the seat was a signification for many different things of play, rest, uh, action, motion. It, it was something that I just really wanted to figure out a way to play with. And then I also really loved that it was kind of similar materials to my paintings where it was like this rope and this wood that I was attaching together and it was only just simply a different plane that it was existing on that made it into a seat and made it into a whole different experience of play. So I really like things that are not what you're kind of expecting it to be, where I really wanted the work to be something that people could interact with without interacting with it. It really is a sculpture on its own. I really wanted to play with that ability to touch the work. You know, I think we don't always like engage fully with art when it's on the wall. And so I think you kind of want to touch the works and I think I wanted to make an opportunity for you to, to do that.